Right guys, um, welcome to this video. This is obviously the first of the platformer videos. Um, I'm gonna kind of take this very slowly because this is probably one of your first times coding in Unreal, in, in Unity, never mind Unreal. Um, so, to start with, what I'm gonna suggest is make sure you've checked out the first video on the whole structure and layout of Unity. Um, because that'll add a lot more sense when I start talking. <laughs> um, so what we're gonna look at is we're gonna look at just setting up a nice simple left and right movement in this video. We're gonna get a character in, we're gonna add a platform and we're just gonna get the character moving left and right. Um, so to start with, um, you wanna right click in the hierarchy. Um, you want to add yourself a, a sprite in here. I'm just going to use placeholder sprites. You may have sprites you can use. Um, I, I'm just going to use the default rubbish sprites at the moment. Um, later on in the videos, I will be switching out and adding in characters and animations, but at the minute, I don't really need to. Um, so I'm just going to make this a little bit bigger. Yet again, you might not need to make this bigger. This is just me. So I'm going to call this character because this is going to be my character. I'm going to very quickly add another one and this is going to be, it's going to start to look great, but this is going to be my floor. So if I stretch that out like that, right, that is my floor. So as you can see, I've added these in there and I've renamed them up there. So that's all we need to do at the minute. Um, so. What should happen if you click play is literally nothing, so I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> um, so if you go to character, we're gonna add some components, which we do with the add component button, obviously. So I'm gonna add a rigid body 2D, like this, right? So once I've added that, if I click play, you'll see the character will just fall. Because the rigid body 2D is what adds physics to it, so we need one of them. The other thing that we need to add is a circle collider. Um, if your character is not a circle, don't feel the need to add a circle collider because it makes no sense. Um, add a box collider like I'm gonna add to this. So I'm gonna add, a, as I say, a box collider to the floor object. So add component, box collider 2D. Obviously we're working in 2D, so all of this is 2D objects. So this is now a box. This is obviously a circle. I probably didn't need to explain that to you, but you'll see with the colliders. Now if I click play, it will fall, but it will hit the box collider and it will stop. So that's that's working. Um, and what we're gonna do essentially is we are gonna take the character, we're gonna make a new script, we're gonna add the script to it, and that's gonna allow us for it to drop and then move left and right. So to do this, I'm just gonna very quickly show you a little bit of housekeeping. So in the assets folder, we're gonna add a couple of other folders. So create a folder, it's gonna be sprites, scripts, and I'm gonna add prefabs as well. We can come back and add more later on. These are the only ones we really need at the minute. So in the scripts folder, double click on that, right click, create, and we're gonna add a C-sharp script. This is very important, this, where you get to this bit, if you click off this and click back onto it to rename it, it will break your script. So make sure that when you get to this bit, you don't click off it. So we're gonna call this character underscore movement. Another thing to remember as well, you can see I put an underscore in there instead of a space. Don't put spaces in your script names because code doesn't like that. Um, and you can see up here, it says public class character movement because that's what I've called it. If I had clicked off and then gone to rename it, it would have already set that so the names wouldn't match up, the references wouldn't make sense. Um, so, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna double click that and I'm gonna open up Visual Studio. So, you're gonna go, when you first load this for a project, it will take a little bit of time. Uh, I've got an account set up already, so you will have to click, uh, if you haven't, um, 
when it asks you for a sign in, um, maybe later, and then choose which theme you want. I always go for this dark theme, it just it's better on the eyes essentially. So, to start with, we're going to set um, what we call variables. And variables are just things at the top of the script that we add just to um, just for us to use. So things like, so we're going to add speed essentially um, and we're probably going to add our rigid body variable as well. These are things that we don't really change, we just use them. It's not, you'll see what I mean. Uh, but this is where variables go, right at the top. So to start with, I'm going to add a public float and this is going to be my speed. Underneath that, I'm going to add in a private rigid body 2D, which isn't like that. Rigid body 2D. And this I'm just going to call rigid. So that's the way that these are set up. This is the this is what I'm looking for. If I just got body right, that might work as well. Um, so public and private. This is the kind of variable, and this is what I'm naming the variable. Always end each line with a semicolon as well, um, or else it just won't work. So I'm going to save that. Um, make sure to keep saving. Uh, so the next thing we're going to add is in the start function. The way that functions work is, as you can see, the void start, void is function. Um, and whatever I put in between these two brackets is the thing that happens in the function. So to start with, I'm just going to write the word rigid equals get component then in um, I always like arrows less than equal type equal to signs them ones um, I'm going to type rigid body 2d I'm going to close that bracket these are using as brackets in in coding essentially um, there's a lot of brackets you'll get fed up with brackets and then we're going to open and close normal brackets I put a semicolon at the end of that. So that's nice and simple. There you go, you, you've coded your first line. Um, what that line does is at the start of the script, it finds the relevant rigid body to the character. So yeah, that's nice and easy. Um, I'm gonna change this function, because it's an update function. I could delete it and make a new one, but I'm literally adding a word to the front of it, which is fixed, um, which, is different to an update because it does it. It's a frame system essentially. Uh, I don't need to go into that. Um, so this is what we're going to do, right? So you're going to write float move x equals input dot get axis raw, and then in brackets and and quotation marks. You're going to type in horizontal. Um, make sure you spell horizontal right because this isn't something we're naming. This is actually something in Unity. Um, so we need to reference it. So what we need to add now is we're going to add something called a vector2. We're going to call this movement. And this equals a new vector2. And then it, the X of that is obviously move X like we've just set. And the Y of that is zero because obviously we're not changing the Y. So that's, that's it. we're getting there, we're getting there. Um, so the third line is rigid dot add force. And then in brackets, we're gonna add movement times, oh, that's not times, times SPD. So obviously times being an asterisk. So I'm going to control S to save that. So technically speaking, this should work. So if we go into our project, it'll do a thing where it looks like it's lagging, but it's just recompiling the script. And then going to add this to here. I'm going to add the speed to, I'm just going to put it on 2 for the time being, just make sure that works. There we go, that is kind of working, I might need to increase that though. 
So we can see now we've got something set up that's moving left and right when we move left and right. So this is just set with the arrow keys or WASD. So obviously this is purely A and D. It doesn't matter which one because they're both set up as the horizontal function. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna leave this video here because um, I wanna make these videos all quite short. But there we go, it's your first bit of code. You've got a character moving left and right. If you've put your own sprite in, there's a very high chance that that currently is spinning round. Um, I'll, just very, I'll just show you very quickly how to fix that. If you just go into rigid body and constraints and freeze the Z rotation, um, now you'll see that it doesn't spin. You may need to increase the speed though just because of friction. Um, like you see mine's moving slower now but it's not spinning whereas it was before. Um, but yeah, nice and simple. We've got a character moving left and right which is a big part of a platformer. Um, so yep, yeah, that's where we'll leave this video. I'll catch you guys in the next video.